Hello, everybody. It's Kelly, your Solar System Ambassador. I'm back with another video for you because we have some updates um, on the DART mission. NASA, NASA did a press conference yesterday updating everybody on what they've observed since the impact a few weeks ago. And I also have a quick uh, update for you on the Artemis 1 mission. Uh, the scientists are really just floating around um, in this euphoric state with everything that has happened since the impact and all of the wonderful uh, information that they now have. Um, so overall, this was a huge successful mission. Um, we were able to change the orbit, so we're going to get to that in a minute because I have some slides for you and I have a video. I hope it plays. There's no audio, but it just gives a little bit more backstory um, about what happened and what they've observed thus far. So, uh, yeah, so let me show you those slides right now. Um, I don't want to keep you waiting any longer because it's very, very, very exciting. So this is another image from um, the Lice, uh, Licia. Uh, CubeSat from the Italian Space Agency. And again, another wonderful image, different angle at this point of the impact for poor little Dimorphos, <laughs> the little moonlet um, that orbits around um, Didymos. So again, just a huge plume of ejecta of material that was just launched right off of the little teeny asteroid from the dark spacecraft just smacking right into it. Now, since the impact, um, NASA has been using, uh, in conjunction with a lot of other agencies uh, around the globe, uh, to start taking some ground measurements um, with ground telescopes. Uh, and uh, also with, um, I know there was the James Webb Space Telescope and also Hubble and everybody in space, <laughs> everybody, all the uh, 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 instruments in space, they're also taking observations at various times with everything we have. So this image is from the SOAR telescope, which is in Chile, and it was taken just two days after the impact. It's a side view of the ejecta. And the reason why it looks so bright, again, is because the sunlight that is bouncing off of all the material that has been launched off of um, Dimorphos. One of the really interesting things, though, is that now there is a comet-like tail trailing behind both asteroids. Um, and that picture, the tail is about 6,000 miles long. I, I just mind blown at this incredible new development from this impact. Just, just it's a spectacular view, I can't, I can't stop looking at it. Now the next image, also equally impressive, is also from the Hubble Space Telescope. Now this image was taken on October 8th, which was about 13 days after the impact. And as you can see, what was one tail has now split into two. So this specific detail, the now having two tails, is really, um, has really uh, got the scientists just buzzing with now trying to figure out why this is occurring. So just a beautiful image again, side on, side view of the impact and all of the ejecta that 13 days later is still shooting out and being lit up by sunlight. Now, the exciting part is we changed the orbit of Dimorphos by 32 minutes. That's correct, 32 minutes. Um, we previously talked about in one of my other videos that the orbit had been observed at 11 hours and 55 minutes. Well, now in the weeks since the impact, the observed orbit of Dimorphos is now 11 hours and 23 minutes. So we smacked that asteroid so hard that instead of a 10 minute change that we thought was going to happen, we did 32 minutes. So that's just how successful that this mission ended up being. And the scientists said that this is something that, you know, theoretically, um, even though we have attempted it now on a very tiny asteroid, um, if something were to become 
a threat to our planet in the future, we would want to do this years in advance. Not like the Hollywood movie um, Armageddon, where they, you know, split the that asteroid in two at the very last second, so it would, you know, fly by Earth and save everybody. Um, really, this is supposed to be a years out type of mission to deflect or change the orbit of an asteroid. If you do it years um, ahead of time, then that just you only need to change the trajectory a little bit because that many years out, that small change will make all the difference in being able to bypass Earth and not hit us. So again, very, very successful. Now, let me show you the, um, the little video that they put together with some radar images from ground telescopes again. So these are, as I said, radar images of both um, Didymos and Dimorphos. They're taken by uh, NASA's Deep Space Network, uh, the Goldstone uh, radio telescopes here in California that I was able to visit a few years ago, and also with uh, the Green Bank Observatory in West Virginia, which I will be talking about that very soon. So we have uh, the Dimorphos, which you see circled in, in green there, and in yellow, what you saw was Didymos. So they were expecting that the orbit would continue to be 11 hours and 55 minutes. But then the little blue circle, what you saw, I'll play it again for you. The blue circle, what you saw, that was what they predicted. If it stayed the same, if the orbit stayed the same, that would be where they expected it to be. But because it wasn't, that was their definitive uh, answer that we did, in fact, change the orbit of Dimorphos. And I can't believe it. I'm going to say it again by 30 two minutes. Not 10 minutes, like they were predicting, but 32 minutes. So you see there in green, that's where Dimorphos was. And in blue, that's where it was predicted to be. But it wasn't because we changed the orbit. Just so incredible. I can't believe it. 32 minutes. It was going so fast, um, 14, between 14 and 15,000 miles per hour when it hit Dimorphos. So yeah, we were successful in this kinetic impactor test from the um, Planetary Defense Office of NASA. So the last update I have for you is that we have a new launch date for the Artemis 1 mission. It is now Monday, November 14th at 12.07 a.m. Eastern Time, which for us on the West Coast, that will be Sunday evening at 9.07 uh, in the evening. It's a 69-minute launch window, which means if they don't um, launch at that time, they've got 69 more minutes to get it off the ground. Otherwise, they will scrub that launch and go to the next one that's planned after that. I don't have much more information about the launch at this point. I know they are doing all their checks and balances, um, changing out any batteries, anything else that needs to be replenished or recharged um, before they roll it back out of the VAB building back to the launch pad. Uh, they're doing right now. So this is their new target launch date, Monday, November 14th. So fingers crossed that we finally get it off the ground. So always take a launch date with a grain of salt. How many times have we had to scrub at this point? But that's okay. Again, this is a test mission. Things go wrong. Um, something new could go wrong at this new attempt. We don't know. They're still learning all of these new systems put together. And, uh, but fingers crossed that it will be a good launch this time on the 14th. Uh, so yeah, that's what I have for you right now. Very exciting uh, to recap. We changed the orbit of Dimorphos by 32 minutes. Not 10, like they were predicting, but 32 minutes. Very, very exciting. Uh, if you have any questions about the DART mission, please send me a message or leave a comment down below and I'll be happy to answer anything that I covered this evening or anything else you might have heard in the news that you want more information on. I'm happy to research it for you and get back to you with that intro information. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, like I said, that's all I have for you right now. I hope you're doing well out there and I'll be back very soon with another video.